Welcome back guys. Today we're in my build room and we're going to be discussing 4L60E and some of the parts and kind of talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of them. Uh, I put out a video where I swapped a 4L60 for a 4L80 and I entitled it Swap That Junk. And I'll be honest with you, it's clickbait and it worked. But Anyway, we're going to talk about a 60E in this video and go through a build of it, just an assembly really. And I'm going to talk about some of the components that I uh, upgrade. The aftermarket's pretty friendly with these things. They have their place for sure. And most of my LS swaps, my last three LS swaps, 4L60E in them, zero problems. So we'll go through this. First off, I'm going to talk about the pump. This is the pump assembly here, and it's a vein style pump. This ring around the outside slides back and forth on this spring. It kind of moves back and forth, and as it does that, it will open and close different areas of it to change the pressure. And that's the way you get pressure out of it, that and a pressure relief valve. Um, you get different volumes and pressures out of it. The pumps on these aren't super problematic, especially they went to this 13 vein pump and back when these first came out as a 700 R4, they had a 7 vein pump in them, then they went to a 10 and then a 13. The 7 vein pumps, you could actually see a pulsation on a on a uh, pressure gauge. And I worked at a Chevy dealer when those were new. So it's been a long time, but the, the problem that I see with these is this component right here these rings that keep those veins blocked in as they uh, you know keeps them in position and I've had those veins break that's really the only problems that I've seen the other is if something gets trashed you get trash in the pump and it'll tear it up but that'll happen with any transmission especially an aluminum uh, pump so pump wise eh, you know I'd say they're about a 7 out of 10 most transmissions either have a gear rotor or this spur gear type pump set up. These, other than them side loading or the bushing going out and they chew the pump body, these just last forever. The component that goes right in here is the boost valve. And it just has this valve that shuttles inside of it. Now, pressure comes in and it can leak past these points. You can see the difference here. Factory boost valve, Sonax boost valve. So what seals better, metal on metal or these O-rings? The O-rings seal better. You can, you can uh, air test them and when you do, you will see air leaking past this as this is in here, Whoop. in here. And air will leak past this point. You can hear it and you can feel it. You can spray it with transmission fluid and see it spray out. And if you use that Sonax boost valve, huge difference. One of the other things is this input drum right here. Uh, in a stock or mild power uh, application, sorry about the shake, uh, you don't see a lot of problems with breaking input shafts or snapping drums or anything. What you do see is over here, there's a backing plate for the 3-4, and it will actually bow when you jack your pressures up, and it will cause the clutches to apply unevenly and burn. Um, the other thing that can happen, this bearing can go out, and it'll cause a weird whine, especially in park and neutral. But what I don't like about this setup is how complicated it is. This is the clutch arrangement in there. So we've got overrun clutch, then forward clutch, then the 3-4 clutch. So there's three clutch packs in this thing, and it just becomes overly complicated. And set these down. This is the stack that's in there. It will apply this for 3-4, it will apply, let's see here, uh, goodness, this is the forward, and then here, this piston, 
This is for overrun. I think that's correct. If I got it wrong, you can hate on me later. But it's just overly complicated. You know, it's not super problematic other than the bowing of that backing plate. Later model, they did take care of some thrust issues in this, and they have this planet, this uh, sun gear, and this component here. And it used to have a washer right here, just a flat plastic washer. And then they went to this roller bearing, and it really helped out with thrust issues and wear issues. So later model definitely took care of some things. Um, probably the biggest known problem in a, in a 4L60 700R is this component right here called a sun shell. Uh, they will snap right here, especially when you get a guy who backs up and while he's moving backwards, slams it into forward or vice versa, forward and then into reverse. And this component along with the reverse input drum here, whoops, shaking again, I keep stepping on the camera tripod. These components in first gear, that setup right there, and this that reverse drum is pretty heavy. That setup right there spins at twice engine RPM. If you rev the snot out of your engine, this sun shell usually won't take any damage because it's pretty light. This component here, these uh, lugs will actually flare and hit the case. I've seen it happen one time on a Camaro. Uh, but I've heard horror stories about it happening, so that can't happen. Um, that's really what you see in the aftermarket. This is a Sonax Smart Shell. This bad boy, I'm telling you, it weighs. I mean, it it, it weighs real similar weight wise, but it's just manufactured. It's thicker. It's thicker in the areas that you need it, which is really really nice. This is not a cheap component but it's really nice underneath this let's see if I can get a side by side there we go this will work so this component sits right there with a washer a plastic washer on it and then that goes to the rear planetary this splines in right here to that rear planetary and there's a sprag that holds this component still so the thrust issue is this thin little plastic washer, and I don't think I have one. I wish I did, but I don't. But what Sonax does is they take their own component here that's heat treated that goes into the, the sprag, and they machine it a little bit thinner. Let's see if we can get that. You can see it's a little thinner there. And then they go with this thrust bearing, this roller bearing. And that goes on, right? Yeah, just like that. And it rolls. So any bearing is going to have less problems. Plus, it's designed to take up some of that thrust so you don't have that forward and back walk. Um, when you have that walk, you'll have things wear out. And especially, you'll have where the 2-4 the band rides on this drum. You can actually see some wear where it, it zigzags on the wear. You'll see it as it applies. I've seen that once or twice, but not a lot, but I have seen it. Um, let's see. So, one upgrade right there. That's kind of a, no matter what, you got to upgrade that component. They do make a factory hardened sun shell. This one is not, but they do, that's why it's sitting here. I use it for a stand to stand stuff up on and beat on with a hammer. Um, but they, uh, it is a nice piece. There's several companies that make them. The factory hardened one for mild horsepower is pretty good. Something else I like to upgrade. This is an accumulator piston. This component, there's one that goes in the case, and then one that goes into uh, for uh, the one two accumulator. It goes in there. Factory, most of the pistons are plastic, and they've got this pin that they ride on. So as it applies and there's a spring on top of it, or they go the other way and there's spring on bottom. But as it goes up and down, obviously you're going to have a wear point on that pin. And I tell you, let's see if we can get this on camera. It's got a bunch of wiggle in there. So they wear on that pin area. They do make metal pins. This one here is a forward accumulator. And it's a metal pin, 
but it's still got some play not as much and they'll usually whatever position they set in they'll wear in one spot and as you rotate it so if you're checking them you rotate them and that it wiggles in a spot you can kind of hear it so after miles it's going to wear so here's something that Sonax makes that's a pinless accumulator and it's got two seal rings a rubber one and a Teflon one and no pin you take the pin out and you toss it and after you toss it you drive a ball into the case where the pin was so it seals otherwise you'll have a hydraulic leak but these I tell you after I put these in you noticeably can tell just in the drivability and how they how they shift and they shift a lot sooner they shift a lot firmer not harsh but firm and I really like these I've heard people that don't like them because they say once you hammer that ball in there the case is done if you're going with this who cares so who cares that you can't go back this is worth the money that's one of my this favorite here has already been modified see that ball knocked in there that's for one of those pinless accumulators. What would usually go in there is the pin. That's the forward accumulator. That's the bads, really, and the upgrade components. But honestly, I don't see a ton of failures on these things under mild horsepower applications. I don't like to tow with them. I see a lot of failures with towing. Um, and what I see failures in towing is... I see the 2-4 the band fail. I've seen it fail several times towing. Um, also, 3-4 uh, clutch pack and the forward clutch pack fail towing. It's just not a heavy enough transmission. I upgrade to 4L80 because almost every day I'm towing. So that's it. And then enjoy the build video. Hope you guys like it. All right, today we're going to do a 4L60 assembly. I've got most of the clutch packs already together, so won't be a whole lot of technical stuff or whatever you want to call it. steel and I'm reusing the steels on this these are choline steels they had about 50,000 miles on them and they were still in really good shape so I'm gonna go ahead and just reuse them and hey yeah but I got you some food in here thank you You're welcome. that's my boy bringing me food because he's a good boy I got three boys and they're all good boys. So this clutch pack only comes on in reverse and manual low. So if you pull it down into first gear, this clutch pack will apply or in reverse. This is called an anti-clunk spring. What that does is where that center support rides, it kind of gives it some cushion so it doesn't beat up against the case and where those lugs are, it'll knock the lugs, it'll bust them out eventually. Moving forward. Okay, where that anti-clunk spring sits, right here, that's where the opening of that snap ring needs to go, or it will not seat. So, just an FYI. Well, there it is. Now we'll 
put the inner part of our sprag in here. Sun gear sends it flies into the sun shell, and they're bad about cracking around here. The uh, there's a factory hardened one, which is an upgrade. If you're not going crazy horsepower, I mean this thing's going to be a little bit of torque, but not a ton of horsepower. Probably 370, 375 ish. Just four pin implants on this one. We don't need anything special. And there's that. Sometimes you do them, boom, they just fall on. Other times, you fight it and fight it and fight it. I think part of it is being half blind doesn't help. I've seen different people do this band different ways. I set it in here like this. Kind of curl it like Here's the pump on this one. I don't see a lot of transmissions that have a vein style pump, but it's kind of a cool setup. Power steering pumps are like this, and it's a variable displacement pump. But yeah, it's uh, you just basically rebuild these, replace certain components in them, and then... Uh, Put a new seal, new bushing in there, and you're good to go. And use this little guy right here. Little guy, big guy, whatever you want to call it. Just gotta wing that on it. This one isn't the best one. My other one was giving me a fit. I broke it and ended up getting this one. Not sure if I like it or not. Better than nothing. Just put it that way. This little ring right here. It's got a white stripe on it. And they do that so that when you put it on, if you get it twisted, the white stripe will be... You'll see the twist in the stripe. So on your seals, they're a hard, not hard, but a Teflon type seal. And they don't really want to go over. And if you just keep pulling them and tugging them, they'll tear or they'll pull up... They'll, they'll get skinny in one spot because they get stretched. So you have a seal sizer. That's this tool. So you slip your seal over it. 
and I'll take all four of them on this input shaft and I'll slip them all on there so that when I'm ready to you drop them into each groove so there's four grooves here and then the tool to make them the right size is a sizer here and it slips down on there and it sizes that and makes it the right size so it fits so you get you a little bit of your assembly goo here Oops. and I'll usually lube the seal up and then get and work it a little bit kind of push it down in there you can see that squishes out that's how much bigger it is than Than it needs to be now but it has to kind of go down over that you slowly work that dude down on there okay. we'll play wash rinse repeat And there they are. Okay, we're all set up here. We're going to test reverse real quick. So we're going to pressure, pressurize this port right here. You should see this clutch pack that I'm wiggling. You should see it apply. That is what I want to see. Now we're going to pressurize for the forward clutch. And then right after that, we're going to do the 3-4 clutch. Forward clutch applies down in here, down at the bottom, this wider ring. And that will stop this planetary from turning. So that's right here. 3-4 clutch is this one up here that you can see visible. So forward clutch first. Good. Now... Three four clutch. And that's just the noise you hear. That's leakage past the seal rings. Once you get transmission fluid and get everything up to temp and they're spinning and unseated uh, in, that won't happen. So normal stuff. Drop the drum in, slide it all past there, and start working the working the three four clutch in, and boom, that's it. Now come over here, line the band up. And I can. There we 
go. All right, we got a pump gasket on there. We got all the internals in. So that's where internals go is in. Now we're going to drop the pump on. I've always just used a couple screwdrivers to kind of line it up. And that'll line up into those bolt holes. Once I get it dropped there, start the bolts. That's funny. Here we've got our 2-4 servo assembly. So it's a Corvette assembly and we've got all new seals on it. Now this part here is what applies second gear. This piston is fourth. So it shows you it's, it's quite a bit more that holds second than fourth. We've already lubed the bore up. And it just kind of goes in here. There's a return spring right here that I glue into place so that it stays where I want it to be. We'll get some more goop. We're going to lube the pin up. If anyone says I didn't have a seal on there, I know. That's all I got to say is I know. Okay. Set that in there. Now you get your blue O-ring. Right there. Put it on the cover. Kicked it around there, didn't I? Usually, what I'll do is walk ring here. Come on, man. This is a whole lot easier when you're not trying to film because usually I'd lay this down on its side and push really hard and they go right together. It's 
That's all you need. Bigger hammer. Okay, servo's in. Valve body's next. You place it in a pin right there. Bam. Drop the valve body on her. Okay. All the posts are the same length. Then you got three, then seven, then one, then eight, then here, here, and here. And those stands were a little bit taller than the others. So, I'm going to run a spot I have before, and then we go down into the first room and lock the transmission. So, another one of those. That's another
that transmission is going in this beauty right here. So coming soon, we're going to have a nice little LS swap build on this one. Well, that's a wrap on that one. wanted to give a thanks to some of my suppliers. I get most of my parts from Transtar over in Fort Worth, and they do a great job for me. And then also, BNI supplies all my torque converters. They're up in Oklahoma. I'll have a uh, some contact info for them. They're kind of old school. They don't have website or anything like that, but you can give them a call. They'll build a converter for you, whatever you want. I've been using them for about the last year and a half, and I've been incredibly happy with them. So give them a shot up there. Bill's a great, upstanding guy. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share with your friends. Let's keep this thing growing. Appreciate you.